Page Punchers! How's it going, super friends? Welcome back to the channel. They're finally released. The seven inch scale Black Adam Wave Page Punchers, which features not only Black Adam, but also the likes of the Man of Steel, Batman, and Constantine. These figures have been released by McFarlane Toys under their DC Direct licensed branding. Out of the package, all these figures look fantastic. I am super stoked about all of these guys. They all come with various accessories, which are unique to each of the characters. So Batman comes with a Batarang. Black Adam comes with lightning hands. Constantine comes with an extra hand attached to a magical pentagram, as well as a spell book. And Superman comes with two extra open flight hands. The trading cards would be a much cooler idea if they all had a different picture on the front, perhaps? And even though they all come with the exclusive Black Adam comic, I do want to let you know that it's the exact same comic in every package. So if you collect all four figures from the series, well, you're going to have four of the exact same Black Adam comic lying around your house. You could put one in the bathroom, one in the other bathroom, one in your collection, one on the coffee table. And oddly enough, these figures are based only on the cover art, because the inside is actually drawn by a completely different artist. Either way, let's take a look at each figure individually, starting with the Man of Steel, Superman. So the Supes figure actually looks really awesome. I, I love the, the sculpt of this figure. He's a more slender Superman, but all the muscles have been nicely defined. The S on the chest is fantastic. I really like that design. Not too keen on the belt area. I do wish there were loops, but that is how Liebermejo actually draws the character, so no harm, no foul. The face sculpt for this guy looks, I would say, somewhat like Liebermejo's art. Not completely, not terrible. It's not a bad face sculpt. I'm just not sure if it quite looks like his artwork. And the colors for this Superman are actually really muted. Like, this is a very gray blue. It's not even as blue as the body that was used for the Bizarro Superman. Even that is just a little bit more bluish. I will say that this cape is so stinking pre-posed. This is probably, this is probably the worst pre-posed cape I've seen from McFarlane Toys. It is so pre-posed. Now, if there is actually one thing one thing that I actually feel like they may have gotten wrong on this figure, it is the comically huge size of Superman's hands. Look at those. Look at the size of his fist in comparison to his head. And look at the open hands. They're, they are massive. Now, just before we get into the articulation, I wanted to crack out just a few of the McFarlane Toys 7-inch Superman figures that I have and posing with them just so you can get an idea of what his scale is compared to theirs. They're all seven inch scale, but they're all slightly different. Now as for articulation, the Superman actually has quite a bit. For one, I mean, you expect, you know, the head to be on the bobble, and that does a lot, but you can also get this guy into some pretty good flight poses. And that's just the head. Once you get the torso involved and the waist, because the torso has, that's a pretty good range of motion. Yeah, I'm cool with that. You get the head, and you get just the the chest here involved. Yep, looking good. Of course, the waist will do 360. The shoulders with that socket there, they do really, really well. I like these a lot. You've got the double-jointed elbows, the 360 bicep swivels, plenty of articulation. Same thing with the wrists. You can see that hinge as usual. Whoopsies. I ripped his hand off. Huh. I must have kryptonite fingers. He's got, you know, a pretty good range of motion as well for the legs, which I like. When you move his legs out like that, there's actually, uh-oh, did he diarrhea in his pants? What's that yellow smudge? But not bad. Has a full range of motion, even with the trunks as a separate piece. I like the fact that the trunks are a separate rubber piece with McFarlane toys. I think that that works so well. Does he have any... Oh yeah, he's got he's got plenty of that motion. Does he have it with this leg? Just gotta loosen it up. Yeah, so he's got the approximation of a thigh cut, double jointed, super flight knees, ankles that have been crafted to hide the fact that it's a rounded hinge. Going forward, this is so the way of the future for McFarlane Toys. I hope that they keep doing this. 
And of course, it's going to get all of the articulation that you hope it does with the toe being like that. And of course, here he is in that classic Men of Steel flight pose, no problemo. And next, why don't we look at Batman? It's a fantastic sculpt to start with. You can see every little detail, all the wrinkles in the suit, all the stitch lines, all of the different pieces of body armor. This looks a lot like Lieber Mayho's art. And the head sculpt? Yeah, I don't mind that. I think that that's a really good attempt at Lieber Mayho's artistic style in 3D sculpted form. And, and the paint looks pretty good too, except for under the nose, right there. That kind of sucks. Now, because this is not your Noel Lieber Mayho Batman, or even your Batman Damned Batman, it's a bit of a different style. Like he's got the bat on the chest that is not connected to the cape. The utility belt is definitely different than that sort of rendition of the Batman. While the boots are very much the same as the previous, and the same for the cape, this looks like something Lieber Mayo would draw. And again, I'm just like really stoked with the amount of detail that we're getting with this Batman figure. It looks amazing. This is a great Batman. The only thing, the only thing that I don't like about this figure is, and once I show you, <laughs> if you see it too, then you can't unsee it, so be warned. He does have a slight, slight green tint to that gray. Don't believe me? Here. That's the green that shows up. Mm-hmm. That's it right there. Heck, check out this picture where all I've done literally is turn up the saturation. It just goes completely green. On the other hand, if we remove all of that green, then we end up with a proper gray and black Lieber Mayho Batman. Hey, let's try that with Superman. Here's the original, and here is a more red and blue Superman figure. Ooh, that would have looked so much better. And so now I can't look at this guy and just see gray. <laughs> I see a black and green Batman. But back on a positive note, I can appreciate the fact that they painted Batman's scallops, the knuckles on his gloves, the bat symbol right there on his belt, the little bits that hang off of his belt there, the, the hooks so that he can hang stuff from his utility belt. They really did a great job with this Batman figure. I'm only going to compare him to the previous Lieber Mayho Batman. I went ahead and swapped the cape. I'm not sure it worked too well, but I didn't like the one that came on it. Anyway, that's what he looks like in comparison. The question is, if this creature of the night is meant to be the Batman, how articulated is he well? The torso. Oh, I want to turn the torso and the whole waist turned. Okay, well, we know the waist is going to do 360, but what will the... Okay, so this Batman is going to get... I am really pushing this too. Not a super ton of torso articulation. That's basically just for show. For the shoulder pauldrons, they are absolutely being hindered by the cape. And so the two of them together just uh, make for very challenging articulation there. When you go to the back, when you, when you move his arms back, Sure, they can go no problem because the cape isn't there, but this cape is glued all the way down to his shoulders. So just be aware. And the actual bicep swivel is also hindered by the shoulder body armor. For someone like me, that's not a huge deal, but I have to point that out because that's part of what this is. It's a review. You have the little bit of round motion like that. Not too great. You've got the double jointed elbows that crunch up real nice. You've got the rounded hinges in the wrist that do a good job. Down here, you've got the back groin, and he gets an okay amount of articulation, actually. Now, do his legs here. Oh, I'm going to say no. No. Mm, not a usable amount. Nothing to write home about. Nothing to speak of. The knees, though, double jointed. Very good. And then the ankles, I mean, we know what the ankles are. We know what they're going to do. they got a hinge, they got a toe articulation. Oh, and the head. And the head. I'm really trying here. That is, that is, that is all, that is all I can get. So not, not super great. All right, so that is Batman. And next we look at the Wizards' first champion, Black Adam. Sporting 
a suit that, honestly, I've never seen him wear before. This is very, very different. It looks like the kind of armor that you would see on Black Adam from a video game adaptation of the character. I'd be down with it a lot more. I'm just not a big fan of the trunks area. This area down here just looks strange. I mean, it certainly is accurate to the source material, I think. I mean, it changes how it's <laughs> colored and drawn, you know, between panel to panel. And let's be honest, this is kind of scribbly artwork to begin with. But check out that head sculpt. That head sculpt is perfect. That is... That is a perfect Black Adam head sculpt. When you compare it to the last one, or when you compare the whole figure, <laughs> this one is definitely better. In my opinion, I like this one better. I also really appreciate the texture of this cape. This is actually what I imagine a Black Adam cape would be like. This kind of like rough hewn texture. I like that a lot. It goes over his shoulders. Probably when I'm done this video, I will attack this part with actual gold paint and leave the inside that color, or maybe I'll paint the inside white, or I'm not really sure, I'm definitely gonna customize them. These shoulder pauldrons are very movable, so when we get to the articulation segment, we should find that they're not gonna get that much in the way. So overall, a very cool figure, like him very much so far. Let's test the articulation. What does he have, or doesn't he have? Well, he can look up, a, down a lot. That's, that's a lot, but up, ugh, that's all we're gonna get. So when we combine it with his torso articulation, is that going to be a reasonable flight pose? Well, that certainly could be better. It's not terrible, but it certainly could be a little bit better. As I said though, these pauldrons don't get in the way at all for the articulation. Full 360 bicep swivel, of course he's going to have. And he's also gonna have double jointed elbow articulation that, well that's, uh, hang on a second. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, yep, that's definitely very double jointy. The wrists inside of here have that rounded hinge and it's cool that you cannot see the ugly rounded hinge because of his wrist bracers. We've also got down here with the groin and very articulated. He's got a little bit in, but not out. And see, out is really where it matters most, I think. Not in, out. And he doesn't really have that much to speak of. What do we have for the knees? Double jointed, of course, we can see that. They crunch up just fine. Big rounded hinge, pivot, toe articulation. Ta-da, so that is Black Adam. Now let's move on to the final of the four figures, John Constantine. He's one of those characters that I feel like has steadily been gaining more and more popularity amongst DC fans and even the general comic book reading public over the years. It's too bad that his show failed because it was actually pretty good. Obviously, almost nothing has been painted as is McFarlane's way. Less painting equals less screwed up paint applications. Here's the head sculpt for Mr. Constantine. That's not bad. That's, that's pretty good, I think, so far. That is my favorite of the Constantine head sculpts from all the figures that I have. I don't have them all. I didn't get the CW version, but as you can see, I do have the Signature Series version and also the New 52 from DC Collectibles. I'm not too keen on the side eye for the head sculpt and, you know, there are some paint issues with mine. You got that, what is that paint crust on his cheek on the side of his face? That ain't right. And then they actually didn't continue the paint from the neckline of his shirt and also from the ripped part of his jeans for his knee there. It doesn't reach the edges properly. Either way, cool looking figure, and it's nice to not have to worry about paint rub for most of the figure. I wonder how articulated this guy is. Let's find out together. Starting with Constantine's messy haired five o'clock shadow head sculpt. Wow, even with the jacket. Nope, that's terrible. I thought it actually went up a little bit further than it actually does, but it doesn't. Anyway, head sculpt, bobble, goes every other way, really nice. He's not a flying figure, so I don't care how far up he can look, it's, you know, every other way. So you can glance and give people the side eye, which, I mean, he's already doing anyway. That kind of makes more sense to me. You've got the torso, not a big fan of this articulation gap up in here. I think that looks kind of ugly, but anyway, how poseable is it? Oh, it's a pain in the butt to get to, but it does work. 
360. Same thing is going to be for the waist. 360. Shoulders. Well, that's not bad. That could be a lot worse. Not a lot of, you know, movement inside of there. It basically just is the ball joint that goes all the way around. You're going to have 360. You're going to have crunchy all the way. And you're going to have these ball jointed wrists, these, these ball hinged wrists you got down here. Oh, well, these ones click into place. It's funny how some do and some don't. And nothing like that, but a lot of motion every other way that you would expect. Knees, <clears throat> how much do they, yep, they crunch up nicely as we would hope and expect. And we've got the ankles. Oh, it would have been cool if this was like pink <laughs> or something for weird colored socks. Like, come on, love. You can't expect me to not have nice socks. Anyway, you've been looking at the articulation. You know what it can do. We know what McFarlane Toys does for articulation. So what exactly now do I think about McFarlane Toys Page Punchers action figures under their DC Direct label? Overall, I like them very much. None of the figures is perfect. I think that Superman and Constantine are my favorite out of the bunch. Black Adam is kind of a strange, almost unconventional design. Not quite like anything I've seen, but he's still a fantastic figure. I really do like him. And the Batman I just find myself wishing was a little bit more gray and a little bit less green, but still, I think that he's a fantastic looking figure. So I would give the wave probably a 7.5 out of 10. As for my final thoughts on the whole every figure comes with an exclusive comic, well, I feel like it's a cool idea but it's also a bit of a missed opportunity. Let me explain. Instead of giving each figure the exact same full completed comic book, why not give each figure a piece of the story? Cut the story into four and give each figure a piece of the story. Therefore, there's more incentive to collect the entire wave. If you want to read the whole story, you got to buy every figure. This is something that we're used to with Collect and Connect figures. If we want to build the whole figure, we have to buy every figure in the wave. And people like me who have all of the figures in the wave don't end up with four of the exact same comic book. For myself, I can tell you, I'm going to open one to read it. You keep one inside of the poly bag and then the other two, what do you do with them? I feel like they're either going to end up in one of three places. eBay, your recycling bin, or the landfill. So yeah, although packing in a comic book with every figure is a cool idea, the way that it's been done, I feel like it's a bit of a missed opportunity. Who knows, let's wait and see if they do it a little bit different for Wave 2. But yeah, those are my thoughts and opinions on this Wave, Wave 1 of the 7-inch scale McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Page Punchers action figures. I hope this video has been an interesting, insightful, useful waste of time for you, and I'll see you in the next one. Have yourself a DC day, everybody, and take care.